Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment and research methodology on my channel the Geo Ecologist. And if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing as we are going to complete each and every topic related to geography. Now in today's session on population geography, we are going to talk about the world problems of population and also some of the world policies and also some of the examples with respect to India. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss this world population problems and policies in today's session. Now before this session of population geography, in the playlist on population we already have all the discussions related to various other concepts like optimum theory, overpopulation, underpopulation and several other topics. Now when we say population problems and policies, it's all related to the older concepts that we have studied. For example, the problems related to the underpopulation, problems related to the overpopulation because optimum population is the reference mark that is what we have learned earlier right so optimum population is supposed to be the best population in terms of population and resource combination or the usage so if there is an underpopulation then also there is a problem and if there is an overpopulation in a country then there are also a lot of problems right for example if you look here the un's world population prospects 2019 report what does it say that India is projected to become the world's most populous country by year 2027, surpassing China and host 1.64 billion people by 2050, right? So this is one of the examples of the world projection on population and along with it comes the problems because overpopulation would give so many problems. That's what we are going to learn. So let's understand through the map of the world. Where do you see the concentration of world population? Look at the South Asia and Southeast Asian region. Now this is the heartland if you see of 21st century, right? Heartland in terms of the population concentration and also population as a capital, as a social capital, right? And rest of the world where you see these darkness or the black Shades here on the map are few other places in Europe, also in Africa and Americas, right? Rest of the world comes at the next tier in terms of population concentration. As you see, the densest population is here in India and China and Southeast Asian region. So where is the world problem related to population going to be? Obviously at the same places where the population is concentrated. Right. So if you observe the challenges for world population in today's world, the first is to stabilize the population growth. Remember the graph that says S shape. So this S shape that we studied and the J shape that we studied, right, this was for the stabilization. So in the population problem, first thing that we need to take care of is this challenge of stabilizing the population growth. It means the reduction in fertility rate as one of the major challenges in the world. Right. Then comes the next that is quality of life. Remember in the optimum population theory, we also studied that that level of population which guarantees the best quality of life. That is what we need to attain. Right. So quality of life is very important. In case of India, if we take that we need to invest in education, healthcare systems, grow more food and also look into the housing. Right. So what we need to take care of is the quality of life dependent upon these facilities. For example, a simple facility of drinking water. Right. So if the drinking water is not pure, it is creating a huge problem. It is creating also a burden on the health sector as more and more people are going to get sick. Right. So a minimum basic infrastructure and the best quality of life is a major challenge. Then what we look into the heavy expenditures. Right. Because of the heavy population base and their needs, obviously it is important that we also have finances to meet. So expenses are going to grow, right? Required in order to fund the basic needs of people and augment the social infrastructure of India. If we take Indian example, this is one important thing. But the same like India in other countries also where population density is more, concentration is more, the expenditure is one of the major challenges as well. Now let's look into one more point that is called Malthusian fear. If you remember the Malthusian population theory that we discussed in the models and theories in population geography. Now let's understand that Malthusian fear is basically what? That 
higher population if it is continuing in terms of exponential growth then what will happen to the food the availability of the food will be a problem it means it is talking about the food insecurity and also with this comes the nutrition security issues right so food and nutrition security are the two major issues that's going to be a big challenge for the populated overpopulated countries of the world right then if you look further the demographic dividend now you must have heard people saying that we are the youth country india is a youth country and we have the huge population potential and 21st century is going to be india's century why because of the huge youth population right so demographic dividend is something which we need to reap right we need to get benefits from it but we need to ensure that the demography is well nutritioned we need to provide them food security we need to provide them employment the poverty needs to be reduced then only in that good situation we can reap the benefits of that population as a capital right in this separate lecture we'll be talking about the population as a social capital there again this point will be discussed but for now let's understand if demographic dividend has to be taken we need to take the benefits of it we need to make sure that its quality and growth is going to be good otherwise what will happen it will become a demographic burden right so there is a thin line difference between the demographic dividend and demographic burden it all depends upon the treatment it all depends upon the facilities it all depends upon the grooming of the population right not just quantity of the population but qualitative grooming of the population so the next challenge that you see here is sustainable urban growth now remember the world is going to urbanize eventually everybody is looking towards urbanization right so urbanization is a huge impact and it's a multiplier effect that happens because of urbanization so first bigger cities are getting innovations and then small tier cities also get innovations gradually and they all wants to urbanize they all want the same facilities that is available in big cities so eventually everybody is looking towards urbanization so un report suggests by 2050 if you look here what is going to happen urban population will increase to 87.7 million and further and the number of urban agglomerations the combination region right consisting more than a million people is also expected to double by 2035 it means a huge demand of resources in urban areas of the world right and also at the same time what's going to happen remember if huge concentration of population is going to get urban it means there is a impact on rural sector in the food production sector agricultural sector in the service sector because urban area is going to be a place of consumerism so that's where we need to look into further if you observe the aging of population now the age structure of population is also very important in these sessions already we talked about the age structure of population so we see as per india aging report 2017 un population fund unfpa remember the share of the population over age of 60 could increase from 8% in 2015 to 19% in 2050 so from 2015 to 2050 35 years of time and we see the share rising from 8 to 19 more than double that's what we are looking into that the world is going to get aged by the time and if aging population is more it means what it means the dependent population is more not the working population right so what will happen then we need to take care of the rising population as well and age old dependents as well and we need to spend more on not just food and shelter and clothes and other amenities but also on healthcare services because that old age population is going to be dependent on healthcare facilities that's where the demand is going to get increased in health sector as well right and there comes the further part of expenses as well right so this is very important and also interesting in terms that demographic dividend has a flip side to it right if we don't take care of demography right now the problems can be faced 20 years later on that's what we are looking here and further we see that inequitable income distribution across the world right the rise of world poverty only few people getting millionaires and billionaires and rest of the population going poorer and poorer so rich becoming richer and poor becoming poorer is a situation which is going to be a grim reality in future if not taken care in present so that is another challenge for the world and further if you observe this particular flow diagram it gives us a good purview or overview of the factors responsible for the present situation of population growth in the earlier sessions also we talked about all these factors so just looking into these factors environmental factor 
economic factor, social factor, demographic factor, which we all know by migration and other factors of demography, and also political administrative factors and natural factors. So what you observe? Population management problems. So this is social, economic, environmental, demographic and administrative. That is the five heads under which the problems are clear cut listed. So what do we need to manage? This is the list here. You can pause the video and you can note down the list if you want. Food and nutrition, housing, education, child trade, child labor, poverty, unemployment, increased crime, social unrest, illiteracy. This is under social. Economic has backwardness, illiteracy, unemployment, poverty. Environment has growth of slums and degradation of the environmental quality there. Then over exploitation of resources, high IMR, high MMR and high densities, demographic problem and administrative problems of law and order, crime, riots and so many others. This is where the entire management has to focus. It means we need to plan our population and we need to make some specific policies. So then comes that what is Indian situation. So in Indian context, if you say we are already an overpopulated country that we know and we are going to overpopulate further by 2050. So if you observe already that there is a representation problem, North South divide is already there in terms of Lok Sabha seat sharing in India, central fund sharing in India between center and states. So those are all political challenges that we already have. Apart from that, healthcare burden that we already are looking into during this pandemic, wave after wave we are looking into what is happening to our health sector and lack of quality education, social distress, high unemployment, then high pollution and insufficient natural resources. Per capita availability of resources is very poor in Indian situation because the resource by population ratio is going to be very important in future and it's presently also at an stake. So what happens? Understand that 17% of the world population is concentrated on 4% of world land, right? So this is the ratio that we're talking about here, right? So if you observe this population density map, right? Observe the northern plains and some coastal areas of India. This is where most of the problems are also going to get concentrated in terms of India. So now let's look into the policies across the world where the world is focusing. So if you have seen 2030 agenda for sustainable development, it has a lot of mentions related to the population policies, especially targeting the reproductive health of people, right? So target 3.7 calls for ensuring universal access to sexual and reproductive health care services across the world. That is one policy. Then further, if you observe here, this 2015 map, it gives us that countries by type of government supporting family planning. So those countries where government takes initiatives and supports family planning measures. So if you observe direct support is the darker regions of the world right and indirect support are the lighter regions and some regions are also no support regions as well right so this is how the world looks like right now it means the world has to come into this color all across right that's important then further if you observe next part of this 2030 agenda is migration related right because migration is a serious challenge if opportunities are there in only some regions of the world some locations of the world everybody is going to go there and then the problems are going to multiply, right? So migration is one factor that is also needed and it's also part of the world population policy. The target in SDG says that countries to facilitate orderly, safe, regular and responsible migration. The words are used carefully here, orderly, safe, regular and responsible migration of the people. So ensuring this would make one thing sure that we are going to manage the population properly. Then further what we observe here in India, national population policy, these are certain points that we need to look into in Indian context. So free and compulsory education up to 14 years of age, reduction of infant mortality rate below 30 per thousand live births. Then we have achieving universal immunization, very important. And right now India is world leader in immunization process, right? We have the vaccination drives going on. And further, the promotion of delayed marriage. Recently what has happened, the age has been increased to 21 years for female right so making family welfare a people central program these are the initiatives that we are taking at india level and also national population policy 2000 identified adolescence as one of the major sections of population that needs a greater attention and remember we were talking about reaping the demographic dividends this steps 
welcomes that right so sexually transmitted disease awareness nutrition requirements unwanted pregnancy education of adolescents making contraceptive service accessible and affordable providing food supplement and nutrition services strengthening legal measures to prevent child marriage all these are where indian government is taking steps and we are looking forward to reaping the best of the dividends rather than in future making it difficult and making it a demographic burden for ourselves so now when we have learned in details about the various aspects of world population problems and policies in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on different other aspects of population like social well-being population as social capital and others so don't go anywhere keep watching keep sharing the videos with others as well and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel